Hello everybody, welcome along to the Royal Exchange. My name is Dan Wimbush and over the next 30 minutes or so we're going to bring you exclusive behind the scenes footage and access here at Reading Football Club as we build up to tomorrow's game with Brentford. Here's a little taste of what you can expect on today's show. Coming up on this week's Royal Exchange, we'll look back on a good week for the Royals that saw a battling point at Hull and a 3-0 win over Stevenage in the FA Cup that set up a tie with Sheffield Wednesday. We'll hear what manager Yapstam had to say on that win, plus his thoughts ahead of this weekend's game with Brentford. We'll be speaking to Stevenage hat-trick hero John Daly Bodvarsson on his Reading career so far, what it was like to knock England out of the Euros and what it was like meeting the man they call the mountain. And it wasn't just a good week in the FA Cup for the senior side. We'll look back on a dramatic win for the under-18s against Charlton. All that and much more on this week's Royal Exchange. So, all of that's come. But before we go any further, we've got a little treat for you here on the Royal Exchange this week. We are going to run a competition. Now, the prize this week comes to us courtesy of our friends at West Berkshire Brewery. And they're going to offer one lucky fan and a few of their friends a couple of extra pints at tomorrow's game with Brentford. All you have to do is answer one very simple question in the comment section here on Facebook and we will pick a winner at random from there. Now, given that this prize is alcoholic in nature, unfortunately, the prize will only be eligible for those 18 and over. But if you are younger, feel free to have a go at getting the correct answer. The question is... Who scored Reading's first goal against Brentford here at Medeski Stadium? So which Reading player scored the first goal against Brentford here at the Madstad? Now, to give you a little bit of a hint, it came back in the year 2000. So get your answer in in the comments section. You have to do it by half past three on Friday, just in case you're watching this a little bit later on and you think I mean half three on Saturday. No, today, Friday, 3.30 or else your answer won't count. So get your answer in the comments section and we'll contact you to let you know if you have won. Now, back to matters on the pitch and after a bit of doom and gloom recently, things have taken a bit of an upturn in the past week, starting with a gutsy draw at Hull followed by a stylish win over Stevenage. Hull City's league games have reaped a combined total of 83 goals so far this season, but both the Royals and the Tigers drew blanks last week. Each team had chances from set pieces in the first half. John Swift drew a good stop from Alan McGregor before Seb Larson's free kick in a similar position deflected just wide. The host did have the ball in the net. John Terrell followed in after Jared Bowen's effort was saved, but referee Darren Ingram's judged Vito Monona to have had both hands on the ball. Reading's best opportunity came and went as Liam Moore met Sean Luco's corner. McGregor was equal to the header and the rebound on this occasion. Chelsea loaning Ola Aina brought a save out of Maloney at the other end as neither team could break the deadlock. In midweek, our opponents again had a goal chalked off. This time it's for an offside flag, which denied Stevenage's Matty Godden an opener. And when Gondon managed to get his timing right, Ansi Yukola was there to foil as the Royals withstood some early pressure from the League 2 visitors. The game was all about one man, however. John Daddy Bodvarsson struck his first of the nights just after the half-hour mark as Chris Gunter's cross deflected free to the striker. A spectacular second followed before the break. A breathtaking ball by Leandro Bakuna was followed by a plum cross from Chris Gunter once again. The Icelander applied a fitting finish to a terrific team move. And after the break, sporting our orange kit because of a first-half clash, Bod Varson sealed his hat-trick from inside the six-yard box. Gunter completed a hat-trick of crosses and was again the provider as the Icelander grabbed his first treble in English football. So it's safe to say it's probably been a much happier household at the Stam residence over the past few days with that draw at Hull and win over Stevenage. Let's hear what the gaffer had to say after that cup win. You know, it's always nice to play against big teams, you know, and of course you can say, okay, the first couple of rounds maybe you can play against some smaller ones and then you can get to the big to the big ones in, in, in the next stage. But, you know, every game is tough in the FA Cup, you know, and now we need to play against uh, well, Wednesday away. You know, again, an interesting game, basically, you know, a uh, good team, a good side, um, uh, but the FA Cup, you know, in, in, in the FA Cup, anything can happen. And we know that, uh, so hopefully it's going to be a nice game for us. 
I think Brentford have got uh, a very good team. You know, they can play some very good football. You know, they. Um, um, I think the last couple of weeks they've been doing quite well. You know, they've been winning their games uh, in what we need to do as well. So it's not going to be easy over here, but uh, it's a team that wants to play football as well. Uh, you know, they want to play in a bit similar uh, way that we do. You know, hopefully we can we can make it very difficult for them and uh, and get the result on Saturday. So Reading back to winning ways, and we are going to be speaking to the man that helped us get there. John Daddy Bob Varson joins us here in the studio to talk over that fantastic hat trick against Stevenage. But before we get there, let's take a little trip down memory lane and look at some past Reading hat tricks. He's running at defenders and they're backing off him. Lafondra! Opening goal. And didn't he take that well? On to Lafondra. Oh, he has the pace. Lafondra for two. Sensational. McCleary pounces, support arriving. McCleary unselfishly to Lafondra for the hat trick. And here they are taking the lead. Adam Lafondra. And it's true, and it's Lafondra again. So, so simple in there for Reading. Ready through Lafondra. Hat trick hero, is he to be? Yes, he is. Again, the son of his former Steve Fogg has kept him in the team here. That's a good ball to Robson Canoe. Here ready can go level. Great save from the keeper. Vindra! Challenge! Everybody's made! Williams goes square, Piazza with a chance to shoot, rolls it forward for Ross and Canoe. Ola John on a very narrow angle, across the six yard box. Vindra's there again! It's two goals in three minutes! Lord, now here's Vindra! Come on, Matty Vindra, let's have a hat trick! Lovely footwork! Great finish! Matty Vindra! His hat trick was always going to happen! Here's a great chance, Von Martin 1 0 Reading! On the back post! The Icelandic has struck! It's the path of Gunter. Gunter on the left, swings in the cross. Von Martin arrives! Oh, Von Martin! Brilliant header to make it 2 0! He heads it from the edge of the penalty box! So, some fantastic hat tricks there, but as mentioned, we are joined by the man who scored the very latest one for Reading Football Club. John Daddy Bob Arson joins us here in the Royal Exchange Studio. John, thanks very much for joining us. No, no worries, my pleasure. I believe, I might be wrong, was that the first hat trick of your professional career? It was actually the second one. Second one? Uh, yes, ah. I scored one uh, in Norway in the cup there uh, a couple of years ago. So, yeah, second one. First one on the shores. How did it feel? Oh, great, you know, it's no better feeling, really, scoring a hat-trick, you know, that's uh, every striker's dream, really. Absolutely. Key question, we've got it with us here in the studio, got the match ball, what are you going to do with it? Have, have you got a, a, a nice prize spot on the mantelpiece ready for it? Uh, not not yet, but it will definitely be, be kept in safe hands, I guess, you know, it's, it's a good memory to have. Uh, I don't have as much balls like Ronaldo, like 70 <laughs> balls, but you know, it's just good good for the memory. Yeah, but think about all the money he has to spend on new cabinets and things like that. I mean, you, you don't want that. You don't want to have to spend all that money going down to Ikea all the time. No, not really. You know, I'm just going to, you know, have it in a good place. And, you know, as a football player, you move around a lot as well. So you just have to keep it in a safe place. As well as your fantastic hat trick, the other big talking point was the kit change at half time for, with Reading going from our traditional blue and white to orange at home in the second half. Have you ever had to change kits at half-time before? No, I was just uh, like a, 
scene from a movie really it was really <laughs> really silly uh i remember before kickoff we were just asking ourselves is this really happening are we starting kickoff like this but as the game went on it went all right actually at least for me um but then we ch changed into the orange kid in the second half and there was no mistake who your, who your teammate was then i was going to ask were there any moments where you were like had to kind of double take because you, you thought it was one of your teammates and it was a Stevenish player? Maybe one, once or twice, which is very uncomfortable because mm. football is all about split seconds. So, yeah, it, it was just a, a very weird decision having those two kids on the field. What was the feeling like in the dressing room after the game? I mean, we, we've not been in the greatest of form recently. How good was it to get that win? What did it, that do for the dressing room? Uh, just a lot, you know. It's 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 very very good, important for the confidence in the team. You know, scoring goals and and, and just have that winning feeling. You know, even though it's a it's a side in the lower league. You know, it it, it you know it's always going to be a tough game, no matter what the side is. We had some bad run, but I think you know, hopefully this game will help us. You know, get a, get a good feeling for the next upcoming games. How do you feel personally? You've had a couple of injuries so far this season. Do you feel fully back and firing? Obviously, no problem finding the back of the net this midweek. Do you, do you feel back to 100% now? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, obviously it was a, 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 it's been a, it's a bit long time since I had 90 minutes. So it was good to, to get the 90 minutes in the body to get, get the body used to it again. Uh, but I feel fit. I feel good. And, and you know, confidence is high. And, and yeah, just want to play. What are you like in the in the dressing room? You know, we spoke about that great feeling. What, what are you like? Are you someone that goes around trying to sort of g up other people? Are you sort of quietly concentrating before the game? I'm pretty much quietly con concentrated. Really, I don't. I'm not much big of a shouter. Really, I just you know I'm very focused on the upcoming game I had. You know, just quiet and listen to music uh, in my ears and. Then when the the kickoff starts, I'm I'm totally in the zone. What are you listening to? Uh, I'm a bit of an old guy, really, and music tastes I like. I can listen all all the way from the Beatles up to Metallica, really. Oh, very so, nice. Uh, I'm not I'm I'm in the minority with the music today. <laughs> they don't ever let you have control of the uh, the no, music player, then. No, no, there's no chance of that. Ah, unfortunately. Okay. Um, how, how have you found life in England? You moved over here with Wolves about eighteen months ago now. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's nice. I, I love it here. I think, you know, especially the culture is easy. It's, the language is easy. It's, it's easy to settle. Um, uh, and English football is always it's fun. It's a fun environment to be in. It's passionate and uh, lots of games. And uh, yeah, I, I love it here, uh, especially after having been being in Norway and Germany before. So it's, it's, it's a nice, nice uh, environment to be in. You're following in the footsteps of some Reading legends, really, that come over from Iceland as well, Ivar Ingemarsson, Brynjar Gunnarsson uh, and Gilfie Sigurdsson as well. Were you sort of, did that help sort of put Reading on the map back home? Did, did that sort of raise awareness? I think so, yeah. I, I remember when I joined the side, you know, the Icelandic media uh, were talking about it. You know, it's, it's been a very Icelandic friendly club, if you can say that. A lot of, a lot of Icelandic players, but they were really, really good players as well. And... and you know, I I remember watching Reading uh, in the Premier League back mm. at home. You know, Premier League is huge in Iceland, as as is the Championship. And uh, I always remember Reading in the Premier League. And I remember also when Gilby was there. Uh, you know, stepping up to his stardom. Did you have any words with him before you joined the club? No, not many. Not a lot of words. I I got a text message from him saying I made a a good choice there, uh, and and he said a lot of positive things about the club. I mean, you joined from Wolves this summer as well. So did Dave Edwards. Did did you sort of have a text from Dave sort of before he signed? Because I think he signed just after you, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, basically, I I just heard it through the media, really, uh, and you know, and then I I asked him if if he was coming here, and he was he said it was very likely, and that was uh, that was exciting, you know. We asked Chris Gunter last week had uh, had he been sent a copy of Dave Edwards' book. Have you got one yet? No, I haven't got one no? yet. He needs to, you know, he needs to answer his friends as well not just the public unbelievable unbelievable well there you go Dave <laughs> the challenge has been laid down that's two from two now you need to get our next guest a book before we come in don't want to make this a habit um, you, you talked about the, the profile of the Premier League but the Championship you know, it's a massive league but was it what you expected it to be when you came over to join Wolves uh, I think what surprised me the most was the amount of games mm. uh, and you know the level of fitness you have to have uh, I think that was the biggest adjustment I had to make because it's so short in between games and, and you know, you need to 
very much take care of your body before every single game because it's a, it's a lot of load. So I got used to that fairly quickly, uh, and yeah, I'm, I've just been loving it. Yeah, you joined as was mentioned in the summer. You linked up with the squad in Holland. You know, you're hitting the net now, but we've got a little bit of footage for you from <laughs> uh, one of your first training sessions over there. You might recognise the goalkeeper as well. It is yeah. Reading's assistant <laughs> manager, uh, Andres Alderink. Talk us through this. What happened? Uh, Andres decided to change it to Buffon for a minute there. So, uh, yeah. I remember that was probably my first session after a break. So, to be fair, in my excuse, I, I hadn't been kicking the ball for a couple couple of weeks. Not, ba not bad goalkeeping skills, though. No, as I said, he decided to change to Buffon there uh, for some odd reason. You know, <laughs> uh, maybe, you, I don't know, maybe he has some explaining to do. Was he a keeper before? Uh, I, 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 I do not know. That is one that we will have to ask him, hopefully, on, on a future show. But, as I said, hitting the back of the net now, <laughs> which is the main thing. <coughs> you know, you enjoyed... You've enjoyed. It. We talked a little bit about Iceland. You've enjoyed some fantastic times hmm. on the pitch with them over the past couple of years, from the Euros in 2016, and you've got a World Cup to look forward to this summer as well. How yeah. much does that motivate you, sort of, in your club days? Obviously, it's always in the back of my head. Really, um, you know, it's a huge, huge step for me, for my career, and just uh, for the nation in general. Um, I just said, said, to, said to myself, you know, priority number one is Reading right right now to focus on myself, to, to play as, as much as I can and, and do as well as possible. And if I do that, I'll, 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 I'll go with high confidence to the World Cup. Yeah. You're going to be facing one Mr. Messi yeah. with Argentina this summer. Who's, is that? There Who's that? I don't know. He's, he's some, I mean, he's not, I know, he doesn't score hat-tricks here, so I don't know who he is. Um, how are you going to be in the queue to get a shirt? Is there is there a pecking order? Well, <laughs> it, it's funny because I remember uh, I tried to get Ronaldo's shirt after the Euros uh, mm. when we played them, but there was already a long queue. So <laughs> I think I'll just leave it right now. You know, yeah. just leave it be. No, well, I'm sure. You know, all you need to do is make sure that you're just in the same bit of pitch as him as, as full time comes on. You know, you're defending a corner or something. It's fine. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, just post myself in front of the camera with him. <laughs> no. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you also, a lot of our viewers probably won't like reminding you of this, you, you played for Iceland as they knocked England out of the Euros. What was that like? I mean, did you know already that you were going to be moving to England that summer? Uh, no, not really. I, I was just, you know, I thought I would keep going in Kaiserslautern after, after the World Cup. No, Euro, sorry. And... Uh, yeah, it went on fairly quickly, everything, you know, obviously we did really well personally and just as a squad and that, you know, um, how do you say, helped me get, take the step to England. Yeah. We mentioned him a little bit earlier, Gilfie Sigurdsson, he, you know, he's a legend here, he's in uh, the Reading Hall of Fame that Star have launched. Uh, how good is he to play with? He's just different level, really. He's, you know, one of those players who are just game changers, really, you know, he... Uh, you know, he can make things happen out of nothing. He has a fantastic right foot, great, great free kicks. And, uh, you know, just uh, very good on the, on the midfield or, or on, in the 10th uh, role. So, yeah, he's, he's a really, really good player. But just not just the quality as a football player, just the working ethic as well. Mm -hmm. he, if anything, I think he works the most for the team in the national team. So I think that's also a good sign uh, of the squad we have is that nobody is has any special treatment really. Your success at the Euros has, has led you to, to meet one other famous Icelander, as famous as Gilfi is and George of all Reading fans, he's, he's number one in our hearts. But for anybody of you out there who watches Game of Thrones, <laughs> explain this picture, John. It is you with the man they call the Mountain. Yeah. So basically it was my last vacation. I spent my last days in Iceland. And I went out for lunch, and the guy was just sitting there. And the table looked like a, a doll's house table. It was so <laughs> small. So yeah, he 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 was a, he's a very big guy. I was uh, gonna say. I mean, you're what six three, six four? Yeah. So yeah, it was. He really is a mountain, to be fair. Uh, so I just asked to get a picture of him, you know, because he's, you know, I'm I'm a Game of Thrones fan. I watch the shows, and and. Uh, you know, I just had to have a picture with him. Excellent. I was going to say, is that is, is TV a big escape for you? What else do you watch? 
everything really i've been watching uh, black mirror a lot a lot nice. i love these shows um you know just everything you know breaking bad i watched that a couple of years ago um narcos you know just yeah i'm a big tv episode and movie enthusiast excellent and netflix if you are watching you can uh, send your sponsorship ideas over to us um we're gonna get a little bit more from you yep. in just a few moments but we have got brentford coming up at the weekend so let's just get a little look at how brentford got on in their last game tomorrow's opponents brentford earned their fourth win in five league games last time out against bolton Florian Joseph soon finished emphatically before half time to gain the advantage for the Bees. The Dutchman was denied a second by Ben Ornwick in the second period, who got down bravely to his effort. And then Nico Yanaris fired through the crowd and against the woodwork as the Bees tried to open up a margin. Wasted chances nearly came back to bite the hosts as the ball pinballed into the path of Gary Medine, but Daniel Bentley was alert to the danger. The game remained within a goal until stoppage time, when Neil Morpay engineered a smart finish to seal all the spoils for tomorrow's visitors. So, as we saw there, Brentford in good form, though, and they just beat Bolton. I think they're on a historically good run at home. I think they're best in 60-odd years, John. We've already faced them once this season, getting that draw at Griffin Park. What did you make of them that day, and, and what are you expecting this weekend? Um, I'm expecting probably a similar game. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough side to beat. They, they play good football. They, they like to play the ball around and, and, and move move the, the ball with tempo. And So it'll be, it'll be a tough game, definitely. Um, but um, I think if we keep the structure we've been doing especially in the last game and the confidence high up you know then then everything's possible I think you know we, we're going 100% for the win of course at our own home ground absolutely hopefully we can keep a third clean sheet in a row we asked for your questions uh, via Twitter at Reading FC and on the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Reading FC we've like I say, but a few people are asking John we're going to start with Ollie Allen who poses the key question Gilfie Sigurdsson or Evering Gamarsson? Um, I think I'll probably choose Gilfie, uh, mainly because you know I played with him throughout my career in the national team, and I know his qualities. Uh, uh, but you know, I know Ivar was a, of course, a great, great football player, but I never played with him. Yeah, another so, man's played for Reading and Wolves as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, Gilfie is the answer. Okay. Elaine Sharp asks, "How did it feel to score your hat trick goal?" I felt horrible. <laughs> no, it felt great. You know, it's you know, can't ask for anything more than that. You know, completely completing your hat trick in a in a winning winning game. You know, just and not just for me personally, just for the the whole team in general, for the confidence. You know, it's so important for for especially in the next game as we talked talked about against yeah. Brentford. So yeah, absolutely. The uh, the key question here, Elm Park Royals asks, does your mum? shop at Iceland <laughs> you know I never heard of this shop before I came to England actually <laughs> so it's a funny name um, but I've never heard I, maybe she does it mm. I, I don't know I have to ask her okay as well you know Iceland if you can join Netflix and sending the royalties checks over here okay. um, Sam Stiles asks growing up did you ever think it would be possible to play at a World Cup being an Icelander if I'm going to be totally honest then no really uh, I remember Growing up, the national team's success was not the greatest. We we were never really close to qualify to any big tournament before, and you know our record was just horrible, really. And uh, yeah, so it's it's a bit weird. Is there anything behind this group? This you know this really talented group. I mean, you, I remember you qualified for the under twenty one championships first, and then the Euros, now the World Cup. Was there anything that the authorities did over in Iceland? Yeah, I think, you know, definitely, uh, gradually as the years gone by, is the facilities has become much, much better. We, we have more and more indoor uh, halls to play in, especially okay. in the harsh winter. And I think, you know, because the population is so low, the amount of coaches that, uh, that are really, really qualified to do the job uh, are working there. So it's very good for the youth development and it's becoming better every day. Jack Johnson asks, why did you choose the career of a professional footballer? Um, 
I don't know, really. I think because I felt I was all right in, in that profession, you know, as a football player. I, 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 to be fair, it was quite late, really. I, I, ne I, I don't come from a football environmental family, so I kind of just went on my own, to be fair. Um, obviously, you know, the coaches in, in the town I was in had big belief in me. Um, so as I was about maybe 14 to 16 years old, I started to... You know, strive for becoming a professional football player. Did you ever? Did you ever have a plan B? What were you going to be if, if football didn't work out for you? You know, I did what you should not do, and there was no plan B for me, <laughs> uh, really. Uh, so it was a big risk. So I don't recommend that. Um, but if I wouldn't be a football player, I'd probably be studying. That's a, a good a prof good a profession as any to be in. Well. John, thank you very much for your time. I said, hopefully we'll, we'll come back here and you've, you've got more match balls off to show for us. But uh, thank you very much for joining us here on the Royal Exchange. My pleasure. Thank you. So our thanks again to John for taking the time to join us here on the Royal Exchange this week. Now, there's a couple of pieces of very special equipment that have been installed here at Renacy Stadium recently, thanks to our friends at Bewley Homes. They're pieces of equipment that hopefully you'll never have to use, but they might just save a life. Without doubt. Yeah. If Reading get 20... The atmosphere. 20, yeah, the atmosphere's yeah. great. Yeah. That's why you go to football. Yeah, it's fun. It? And how many people could probably fit in this stadium? Oh, I think it's about 24,000. 24,000, yeah, but how do you know if everyone's going to be safe here? Because there's so many people, a bigger chance of getting someone being ill. Medeski Stadium hosts something like 60 or 70 major events per annum. At the forefront of our mind is individual safety for all people visiting the venue. During that visit, an individual can have a life-threatening incident. And we like to think that we have all the facilities in place to deal with that. Beauty Homes is a locally based development company that's built in and around the Reading area. We like to go a little bit further and we think that it's important to be able to put something back into the community uh, for the community to benefit from. It's quite possible in a crowd uh, as big as this that uh, somebody would suffer cardiac arrest. What's cardiac arrest? Uh, cardiac arrest is when your heart just stops. Mm, that sounds very serious. Yeah, it is. Sudden cardiac death is the number one killer in the UK. It kills more people than lung cancer, breast cancer and AIDS combined. Sadly, my husband dropped dead in front of me. He died from sudden cardiac death. We're very lucky here because we have two uh, public defibrillators. What's a de defibrillator and what does it do? A defibrillator is like a machine that anybody can use and it sends um, a shock through your heart which starts it again and you've just saved a life. We investigated the opportunity to install defibrillators at this location, uh, both for the general public to have that facility, but also for players and associated uh, facilities that the Majeski Stadium offers. And this has been carried out in association with the Arrhythmia Alliance. Our principal aim is obviously to help save lives. A hundred thousand people die from sudden cardiac death each year. That's approximately 250 people a day. We need to ensure that our loved ones, our colleagues, our friends are safe with an AED nearby. A football club is the focal point for any community. To have the facilities in place to deal with life-threatening incidents is really a major important factor. <laughs>
just in case you were thinking it was a Saturday trip, no, it will be on a Friday night. Again, ticket information is up and available on the website right now, but it's £15 for adults if you're thinking of making the journey. That game has also had a knock-on effect of moving the Burton fixture to the following Tuesday. And again, tickets for that one still available. Head over to readingfc.co.uk for slash tickets. Of course, you can also phone the ticket office on 01189 681 three one three and then after those couple of away games we're back here we're back at the madstad to take on mill so make sure you're here to support the boys as best that you can right it wasn't just the men and the senior team that did well in the fa cup this week our under 18s were in youth cup action as well they took part in a seven goal thriller up at welling united's ground against charlton and after the game in the last couple of days or so we caught up with the man who led the team to that victory, David Dodds. Yeah, you know, we've, we've got a clear philosophy of how we play uh, football at the club. Uh, and we have done it for some years now. Um, you know, and we stuck to that philosophy. Um, in the second half, we did go a little bit more. We got the ball into their uh, third or into their half a little bit more than what we usually do, a little bit quicker. Uh, and then that created some little situations by playing football to unlock them. Uh, but yeah, the spirit is certainly there. That's, that's a... A taken, you know, being a Reading player, you've got to be the spirit and everything. And the lads showed they, they had a real balance between keeping the principles of how we play and that rolling the sleeves up to, to, to battle and, 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 you know, do what it took to, to win the tie. You know, I never ever look at the next round before the rounds. I didn't even want to go and see their tie or see any footage or talk about it. And I tried to, to you know, impose that on the players, not to think about anything else apart from that one tough game which we're through now, so now we can look at uh, you know, what, what's going to happen next. But um, you know, there's only eight Cat 1 academies left in the competition at the minute, and that just tells you about the quality of the rest of the country, you know, the, uh, the, the other team. So you know, whatever team we draw against, it's going to be a tough game, and uh, this will be no exception. We have come to the end of the show, unfortunately. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us. Just one thing to do before we go, and that is reveal the answer to the quiz question we set at the top of the show, which was who was the first Reading player to score a goal against Brentford here at Medeski Stadium. It was back in the year 2000. It was a 1-0 victory. And it was A.D. Williams who got the winner that day. He was the first Reading player to score against Brentford. Congratulations if you have picked the winning answer. We will be in touch with you very shortly via Facebook to let you know if you are the lucky winner. But thank you to everyone who entered the competition and stay tuned because there'll be plenty more to come. And if you are coming along to the game against Brentford, don't forget as well, if you're a season ticket holder, our e-cash scheme is now available and launched. It means you don't have to bring anything other than your season ticket to pay for food inside the stadium or at the Millennium Medeski Hotel as well. Simply head over to runningfc.co.uk forward slash tickets forward slash e dash cash. There is a video there that explains everything you need to do to get it up and running. It's basically a, a cashless system, same way with your, your contactless payment card at home. Just means you can uh, no longer have to dig around and root around your wallet to try and find that uh, crumpled up fiver to get your pie at half time. So very much encourage you to head over there as well. And any money you spend using that e-cash scheme will help with your Royals rewards. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Royals Rewards, again, more information on the website, but basically it's your way of entering competitions. It gives you exclusive chances to bid on unique items that you just won't get anywhere else. And just this week, we are running a competition that sees you bid for a chance to uh, head along to the Reading Training Ground at Hogwood to watch the first team train. And if you don't want to bid, then just you can buy a prize entry ticket. So there are two ways to take part and win in that one. So again, head over to the website for more information. But that wraps us up here for the Royal Exchange this week. Again, thank you very much to my guest earlier, John Daddy Bodvarsson. Thank you to everyone who watched and to those who sent questions in and to those who took part in our quiz. We'll join you very soon. In the meantime, come on you ours. <laughs> Yes!